Welcome to this QuickBooks 2019 tutorial for beginners. My name is Matt Hulquist with the QuickBooks University. And what I want to show you in this video is how to receive payments. Okay. Sounds simple enough, but uh, sometimes there's some nuances that can throw you off a little bit. So I'm going to show you some of those in this video. All right. So receiving payments. All right. This is in general going to be when we have an invoice out there. So if you have created an invoice and sent it to a customer and they have now paid you, okay, whether that's, you know, through a credit card, check, cash, whatever the case may be, you have to record that in QuickBooks. All right. So a common mistake that I see people make is they will go in, they will create an invoice, send it to the customer, and then they will receive a payment. They'll get a check in the mail. Well, instead of going to this receive payments button, what they'll do is they will just go to deposits and they will make a deposit and they will show it in the check register. Okay. So when they go to the end of the month and they reconcile, it all reconciles because, you know, the deposits in there, you know, the checks, whatever, everything reconciles, the bank reconciles. The problem is they still have this invoice outstanding out there. And what typically happens then is that they have double counted their sales. What I mean by that is they have an invoice out there that shows a sale. And then when they make a deposit, when the check comes in, they show a sale again. All right. So they've duplicated sales and they still have this outstanding invoice out there. All right. So you want to make sure that if you have an invoice out there and you receive a payment, you've got to click on this and uh, record the payment. All right. So let me show you that here. If we click on that, uh, first of all, you're going to choose your customer. Uh, in this case, let's see, there's an invoice for Jason Birch. All right. So he's got uh, the original amount, $1,005. And you're going to see a few things here. You can choose cash, check, credit, debit, e-check. And then there's, you know, MasterCard, barter, et cetera. All right. So we're just going to say check. All right. And what you're going to do is you're going to type in your check number and type in the amount. So let's say that he paid the full amount. Okay. And let me tab off of there and you'll notice that it checks off that invoice. All right. <clears throat> it's going to check off that invoice because it's applying it to that uh, invoice. And you'll see down here, amount due $1,005, applied $1,005, discounts and credits zero. All right. So this pays it in full. Now I want to show you a couple things up here. If you look up here, you've got some tabs and new, delete, print, email. Okay, some of these are pretty self-explanatory. Now, there are some other buttons here. You can unapply this payment and it'll unapply it there. You can auto apply the payment. All right. And then there's discounts and credits. He doesn't have any discounts and credits. And so we're going to cancel this. Now, you can also go to reports. And a couple things here, you can view open invoices, balance detail, et cetera. Um, sometimes I like to look at the transaction history. If there is any transaction history, there was none there. Okay. And then you can also look at the payments and you can add credit card processing. Okay. That's if you want to add credit card processing within QuickBooks. All right. So let's go back to the main here. Now, the other important thing to keep in mind is you need to know where this payment goes. Okay in QuickBooks. Okay. So this money comes in, you've got this payment. Where does it go? All right. So you can click this and, and read this, but if typically the way QuickBooks is going to be set up is this is going to go to what's called undeposited funds. All right. So it won't show up in your bank account because the way QuickBooks keeps track of this is it's assuming that let's say that, uh, you're going to collect these checks all week and then maybe go to the bank once a week or twice a week or whatever the case may be. All right. So it puts it to this undeposited funds account. And when it puts it there, it sits there. It doesn't show up in your checking account. So the step would be, let me go ahead and save and close this. The step would be next. You need to record deposits. All right. So you'll see here, Jason Birch showed up in undeposited funds. So when you go to the bank to make the deposit, you want to record the deposit. You want to make sure it matches the deposit you're making at the bank. That way you can reconcile. So when you check this off and make that deposit, check it off, hit OK. So if this is the deposit you're making at the bank, then great. All right. And that's how you're going to move it from undeposited funds to checking. 
All right, so let me save and close. So now it'll show up in our checking account. All right. So very, very important steps to follow when you create invoices in QuickBooks and you receive payments and then you make deposits. You want to make sure you follow these steps to keep your books straight. All right. So for more training, head on over to uh, QuickBooks University. We've got uh, uh, some other free videos with some common mistakes that people make in QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Desktop. Plus, when you become a member, which means you purchase the training tutorials, I answer all your personal questions with QuickBooks. I'm here to support you. So head on over there, qbuniversity.org.